So hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Um, following all the positive responses as well as some comments um, suggesting if I could uh, go through some of the harder syllogism questions, I've decided that today I'll be going through some of the longer ones and also some more different styles from both the official UCAT website as well as some of the ones on Medify. So if we get into this, um, and just as a little disclaimer for anyone um, who is not aware, I'm going to be using the arrow method to solve these questions. And I previously talked about this in one of my earlier videos. So if you are stumbling upon this video and you're new to the channel, you know, please do check out my other videos. Um, and I think they're going to be really, really useful tools, especially for anyone who's going to be setting the UCAT um, this summer. The arrow method, especially, I think will be something that will help you basically crack syllogisms as well as other techniques such as creating the hypothetical, which I talk about in the other video, um, but I won't go into too much depth here. This is more for just kind of continuous practice, okay? And just so you can kind of expand the ideas that you currently have, okay? So let's start with this. So it says all aspects of a business are either manageable or unmanageable. It says none of the unmanageable ones are related to finance and tech. So from that, you can gather that the related, the the, the, the aspects related to finance and tech must be manageable. Employee satisfaction is a manageable aspect of the business. So let's have a look here. The, the first statement says some aspects of the business are manageable. Well, from our diagram, it could be true that all of the aspects of the business are manageable. Okay, it could be that there's no unmanageable aspects. And so therefore, once again, we're creating the hypothetical. So the opposite is true. So all aspects, that could be true. Therefore, original statement has to be false. Employee satisfaction is the only manageable aspect. That's false again, as we can see finance and tech, those aspects are going to be manageable. All aspects of the business related to finance or technology are unmanageable. That's also no, because we know they're manageable. All unmanageable aspects are related to neither finance nor technology. That's true. I guess that's just a rewording of what it says here. Not all manageable aspects of the business are related to finance and technology. This is true because we also have employee satisfaction. Okay, perfect. So on to the next question then. Okay, so in the next question, it says in a university, there's two different types of biologists zoologists and botanists okay so there's only two types it says viv the biologist is not a botanist so viv must be a zoologist and it says some of the biologists are male so it says some are male so viv is a zoologist yes we know that must be true since she's not a botanist viv who is not a botanist must be male not necessarily some botanists are male once again we don't know because um, it could be that all the zoologists are the ones that are male and there's no female botanists. Once again, creating the hypothetical. At least one of the biologists is female. Yes, because some represents 2 to 99. So there must be at least one biologist that's a female if 2 to 99 are male. Not all zoologists are female. Once again, we don't know that. Okay, There's not enough information to conclude that. Because we could say, for example, that all the zoologists are female. Or we could say that all the zoologists are male, and then um, it's just the botanists that are female, or vice versa. So all the zoologists could be female, and all the botanists could be male. Okay? Okay, so on to the next question. So once again, if you'd like to pause it, see if you can do it yourself, and then we'll go on from there. Okay? So, among the hospitals in the region, few follow the biomedical waste management protocol. It says, all the licensed hospitals in the region. So that means there's licensed hospitals in the region. We don't know how many. There could be one, there could be loads. We don't know. But all of those follow the biomedical waste management protocol. Okay? So let's have a look at the first one. Some hospitals are not licensed. Well, we only we know that all the licensed ones follow the waste management protocol. And only a few of them in the region follow the waste management protocol. So therefore, we can conclude that this must be true. Because there must be some that are not licensed. Some hospitals outside the region are licensed. Well, we just don't have enough inf enough information about those outside the region. So once again, you could create the hypothetical where all the hospitals outside the region are not licensed or are licensed. Like, once again, not enough information. That's no. The hospitals in the region either follow the biomedical waste pro management protocol or are licensed. So what do we say about all? Or the easiest way to disprove all statements is prove both are right or both are wrong. So here, you can know that there's licensed hospitals that follow the waste management program. So this has to be false, okay? If a hospital in the region is licensed, it must be following the biomedical waste management protocol. Yes, you can just see that from our diagram, okay? 
If a hospital in the region follows the biomedical waste management protocol, it must be licensed. Well, we know all the licensed ones follow the protocol, okay, but it doesn't mean that all the ones, all the um, hospitals that follow the protocol are licensed. So this is that ABBA trick, okay? So we're unable to conclude that. So it can look a little bit daunting, but once again, I think if you abbreviate it, get your arrows in properly, it should make sense. Okay, on to the next question. Okay, so another one. Courage is the greatest virtue of all. Absence of fear is not the greatest virtue. So absence of fear is not the greatest virtue. But having the conviction to act despite fear is. So having the conviction to act despite fear. And so... Because I've done so many of these questions, I know what's going to happen. You can see it's telling us that courage is the greatest virtue and having the um, conviction to act despite fear is also the greatest virtue. So we know that these two are basically equal to each other. Does that make sense? So being fearless is one of the virtues. Um, we don't know anything about fearless at all, but we can't make any conclusion. Being fearless is the greatest virtue. Once again, it tells us the absence of fear is not the greatest virtue. So that's going to be no. So absence of fear, fearless. Courage is the conviction to act despite fear. Okay, so we know that courage is equal to the greatest virtue and having the conviction to act despite fear is the greatest virtue. So since they're equal to each other, this must be true. So you can really see what I meant when I said in the first video that when you start off with this technique, the hardest bit will be drawing your diagram but later it will be the comprehension aspect okay so courage is having the conviction to act fearlessly well no it's having the courage to act despite fear okay so it's not having the conviction to act fearlessly and lastly there is no virtue greater than the conviction to act despite fear we know that's true because having the conviction to act despite fear is the greatest virtue so this is yes so this one's a bit more of a kind of a mental one, if you kind of think about it. Um, and once again, I think that's why if you try to do it in your head, you would definitely kind of mess up a little bit, potentially. Anyways, I know that I would, which is why I would definitely stick to the diagram. Okay, cool. On to the next question. Okay, so this is what appears to be a fairly tricky question, but let's have a look at this one. We can dissect it and break it down. So a few questions in the test were based on extended thinking only. The rest of the questions in the test were based solely on understanding on our application. So the rest, that means it's one or the other, is based solely on understanding, solely on understanding or application. Okay? None of the questions in the test were based on recalling facts. Well, we know all the, all the answers, all the questions were based on solely on understanding, solely on application, or on extended thinking only. So this is going to be true. Not all the questions are based on understanding or application part is also going to be true because some were on extended thinking. At least one question that was based on extended thinking was not based on understanding. Once again, yes, because it was extended thinking only, so nothing else was involved. All the questions in the test were based on extended thinking or understanding or application. Once again, yes, because we know that all of them, it's solely on understanding, solely on application, or solely on extended thinking. So there was no overlap between them. So here we can't disprove this all statement because you can only have one of these. A few questions based on application were also based on extended thinking and application. Well, we know that's wrong because questions are either solely on understanding, solely on application, or on extended thinking only. Okay? Awesome. 